for you to kind of just, you know, tell your story real quick. And then what I want to do, what Gage had asked me to talk to you about phones, because everybody that has been in FL, FFL dial, they know if they've watched you that you are a gangster. And I want to kind of break that down because, you know, I've, I've been in this business for six years and I know where the money's made. I don't care what you say, how hard you work. If you take off during phone days, you're not going to be peaking. So first off, go ahead. Thank you for taking the time and uh, go ahead and address the team. I know they're looking forward to hearing from you. Sure, absolutely. What's going on, Enhanced Foundation? Very excited to be able to be here. Um, it's just, it's, it's exciting to um, be able to share with you guys just what's happened for me with Family First Life. It's just been an incredible journey. Um, we're here in March now, so I got started in the end of August or the beginning of August, end of July, actually. So um, it's wild how quickly this business can move and change and build and grow. Um, it seems like just yesterday, it was just me getting started in the field, having my first couple appointments. And, you know, now we're on track for, for VP this month. And I remember being terrified to go into my first appointment and uh, terrified to make my first dial. And the first time that Grady texted me and said, unmute yourself on live dials. And I was like, dude, no, I don't want to unmute myself. And now I dial every single dial day at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So if you guys ever want to join me, you're more than welcome to. And uh, even when other people during their dial slots, if they're not dialing live, I unmute just because I, I just have come to love dialing live. And uh, it's just become one of my favorite things, dialing the phone. Uh, the discipline is tough of dialing the phone, but it's just become something that you have to fall in love with, especially as you build this business. So kind of taking a back um, uh, backtrack a little bit, just so you guys can get to know me. I'm 27 years old, uh, currently calling in from my farm in Oregon. Uh, normally, different backdrop. I'm in my wife's first grade classroom office right now because my office is getting remodeled right now. So if you guys wanna to learn to count to 120, we've got the 120 number chart right here. Um, but I, I'm 27, I'm married, got a little baby boy on the way coming here in July. So we're very excited for that. Uh, my background has been in direct sales and network marketing. So um, I'm sure that some of you guys have dipped your toes in the water of that world. And that was my life. I was there for almost 10 years and I got started in one company, a health and wellness company, selling energy drinks to college kids, got to travel all over the world doing that. Uh, before that, I was working at Taco Bell, worked there for quite a few years and found my way into direct sales and network marketing. And it changed my life. Uh, I went from, you know, being this guy who was going to school, trying to get a marketing job, and working at Taco Bell to work my way through to traveling the world and uh, doing sales conferences. And it was just an incredible blessing. Now, um, in that business, I built to the coveted, you know, six figure income. I was 19 years old when I did it. And it was a big deal. And um, overnight, it was gone. You know, that company, um, they decided they wanted to create some new uh, precedent in the direct sales industry. And they wanted to use our company as an example to set that new policy. So they shut us down overnight to revamp the entire industry. So we went from, you know, we made it to, you know, I thought, you know, this is where I'm going to be bringing my grandkids to these conventions to it's gone overnight. Now we've got a team of 4,000 people that we need to find what's the next opportunity. And, um, we quickly, you know, adjusted and we moved all of our people to another company and that ended up just not being it for us. Uh, just, the culture wasn't right. And of course, every single time you move from opportunity to opportunity, you lose like 30 to 50% of your team. So every time that we made a move to a new company, our team got smaller and smaller. So for the next couple of years, I was chasing getting back to that level of success that I was at previously. Uh, ultimately, uh, once we jumped from a couple of different companies, we said, let's try our hand at starting our own network marketing company. So uh, we started our own uh, travel and adventure club. That's actually where my wife and I met. And we did that for about two years. Uh, fantastic opportunity. Don't regret a single moment of it, but it was, it was really hard doing it ourselves. And uh, I feel very grateful that with Family First Life, we have such an incredible infrastructure here that we don't have to worry about um, being Sean Mike or being um, any of the corporate team. So uh, I'm very excited for that. Um, as I transitioned out of network marketing, as that business kind of fell apart, um, throughout my entire journey in, you know, in entrepreneurship, we've always been creating sales and marketing tools, training tools, training websites, all these different things, recognition systems. So then we said, why don't we just create a business out of just doing that? 
So we started to help network marketers, high level salespeople with branding and marketing and recognition and email marketing and websites and funnels and lead generation and all of these things. And we did that for about three years and we built up a business to about a half a million dollars a year. And that was a big deal until you actually dug into the numbers and you saw what that actually was. When you took a half a million dollars a year and you split it up between four partners after paying taxes and two employees, uh, I made $2,000 a month. So that's oh. what I was willing to accept to run a half a million dollar business. And I was the director of operations. So everything ran through me. I was the puppet master and I facilitated the sales. I facilitated the operations. I facilitated the finance. That's what I did on a corporate side. And um, that's what led me here. And long story short, um, pandemic happens. And right before that, my business partner and I are digging through our, our books. And as a business owner, do, you know, do your own books. Don't let somebody else do your books. And multiple um, five figures was missing from our bank account. And, you know, long story short, one of our partners, there was some fraud that happened. And we decided that we were going to shut that company down. So we're building this big dream. And then overnight, that's gone. So I've been on this entrepreneur roller coaster trying to make it. And uh, as this is happening, um, I reach out to Grady with zero intention of joining Family First Life because I looked at what he did and I said, that, that's hard. I said, if it's, if it's my last resort, I will reach out to Grady. If it's my last resort, if I really want to work that hard, I'll reach out to him. I'd known Grady from network marketing over 10 years ago. His family, his parents were my first mentors. So I've spent time with Grady, you know, and Easter, Thanksgiving. I've spent time at his parents' house for, you know, pretty much every week I go to, or every year I go to Sedona for a week and spend time with his family. Um, and I just reached out and saw that his wife was pregnant. And I said, hey, congratulations, man. You know, I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well. And he's like, can I call you? And I was like, dude, of course. And he's like, dude, I feel so bad. I haven't talked to you in like two years. You just got married. I was supposed to come to your wedding. I didn't come. Let me get you a gift. You know, all these things, you know, what's going on with life? And he just, at that point, I'm like, okay, this is one of my first mentors. I haven't had a chance to be transparent with anybody about this business journey I've been on for the last couple of years. Let me just share with him what's going on. And he was like, dude, I'm not going to pressure you to join Family First Life. But what I'm really looking for right now is I need somebody to come on corporately to help me with marketing and operations, to help me build these recognition systems, recruiting, so we can take FFL America to the next level. And I'll give you some stability. And I was very attracted to that. And I said, okay. I'll accept, you know, a thousand bucks a week to now do this for you and help, you know, build up Family First Life America. And I, and I fell in love with the team. I fell in love with the group, what everyone was doing. And Grady said, dude, I'll pay you 70 grand a year, a hundred grand a year. We're going to get an integrity deal and you'll get health benefits. And I was like, dude, that that's the goal. I've been on this entrepreneurship journey for way too long. Let's, let's go there. I'll help you build that. And um, then my wife, who's been a teacher for the last eight years, she gets laid off from her job because of COVID. And they say, there's not, a, we don't know if kids are going to be coming back into the classroom next year. So we're going to be cutting down staff and you're not coming back. So ultimately she ended up getting a, a temporary position. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of explain how that story came to fruition, which is pretty cool actually. So um, when that happened, I said, all right, Grady, I have to do this now. You know, not, not do I want to do this, but I have to do this. I'm going to get my license as quickly as possible. What's the quickest you've seen somebody do it? And he's like, dude, like a week. So I passed my exam and my test in six days. And I said, I have to make this happen. We just lost $4,000 a month in income. You're paying me $4,000 a month. We have bills to pay and I need to replace this income. And we just lost our health insurance. I said, what does it take to make $4,000 in a month here? And he said, buy some leads, make some calls. And if you do that and you set enough appointments, you'll pretty much just fall your way into $4,000 a month. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And my first weekend in the field, I made 5,000. My first 10 days, I did 15,000. And at that point I said, oh, okay, so this is, this is what you say, this is what you mean when you say the best business ever. And I was hungry. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Absolutely. The first time you taste a deposit, it's the first like, it's, time you taste the deposit, you're like, Ooh, I need some more of that. <laughs> sure. Sure. But it was really like, for me guys, you got to imagine, you know, being on this entrepreneur roller coaster, you know, my wife and I, we've only been together for three years, married for just under two, but for the last three years, I'm just like, babe, you know, trust me, 
trust me, trust me, trust me. This is going to be the thing. This is going to be the thing. And then it just wasn't the thing over and over and over again. Trust me, I can make this happen. And she's the one with this, you know, 10 year teaching position. She's making, you know, $60,000 a year, which she's got the health benefits. Stable. She's, really, she's stable. She's carrying the household. Yeah. And, you know, our roles were flipped where I was working a stay at home business and she's out in the world, you know, serving students and families and I'm home, you know, basically making sure the household runs and she's right. out in the world making the money. So it was right. a huge flip for me because I've always had this thing where I've wanted to be the provider, but I didn't know if I could really do it, especially after that first business shut down. It just, for the rest of these years, I was chasing after it, chasing after it, never finding it again. And since joining FFL, I've been the most confident I've ever been in my life to be a provider for my family to the point where um, you know, my wife, she did get a temporary teaching position this year, um, half time. And uh, yesterday was her last day ever as a teacher. And now she is going to be full time awesome. stay at home mom, and I will be carrying the family. And it's just, it's an Amen. incredible feeling to be able to do that. And I feel the most confident that I've ever felt, like I said, to be a provider. So family first life has changed everything for me. It's built my confidence back through the roof. Um, you know, for me, I've always had this limiting belief. Um, I've always had somebody, whether it was like my old business partner, or Grady, somebody, it's like, it was this number one, number two, I was a really good number two. I was the, the operator and there was right. the visionary and I was always the number two. And Grady was like, dude, like I'm, you're going to be like the number one of your own business. And yeah. I was like, dude, I don't even know if I could do that. Like, I'm much more comfortable being your number two here with Family First Life America. And you just be the visionary and I'll just be the operator and we'll, we'll build this thing together. He's like, no, dude, you're built for so much more. And we're going to help you go out and overcome that limiting belief. And we did. And I just, I feel so grateful that he did that for me. So it just, it gave me new life. And that's what Family First Life can do for you guys. It can, Absolutely. it can change everything. It's not just financial. Um, the limiting beliefs that I've overcome with, you know, not, thinking that I could actually work this hard. You know, I didn't believe that I could get up every single day at, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning and work until eight, nine o'clock at night. Is that what I want to do? Do I want to spend time away from my wife? No, but it's this, this hunger that we have to build something where I can choose to never have to work a weekend again in a couple of years. And I can yeah. choose to spend every single moment with my kids as they grow up. And one of the things that stuck with me and this will stick with me for my entire life, um, Grady's parents. So they actually, Grady's dad, um, I can't name companies, but he's the number one insurance producer in life insurance for a very well-known name in, uh, in life insurance, a big captive company. And um, he joined network marketing. And I remember going to a, um, a home event and Grady's dad stood up in the front of the room and he was like, Grady, because of my business before this and because of network marketing, how many days was I home when you were growing up? And I remember Grady saying every single day. And it like almost brought tears to my eyes hearing that. And um, that's just something I want to do for my family. And that's why I'm working so hard right now to be able to do that. And obviously, I'm going to continue to work and continue to grow a business, but I want to be able to have the choice to be able to do that. So that's what gets me so fired up about Family First Life. So let's start there. All right. Awesome, man. I, I love it. And uh, I guess in July, your why is going to get even bigger and stronger, right? Congratulations yeah. on fatherhood. I'll tell you, just as a father myself, there's that's a feeling that you can't know until it happens. And it's a beautiful feeling. So congratulations, man. Mm -hmm. um, so what I want to talk to you a little bit about, because, you know, in this business, everybody, a lot of the sexy stuff is shown. But where the war is won is in the trenches, in the nasty, dirty trenches, which I call the phone room. And, you know, it takes a lot of mental discipline. It takes objectives and it takes tenacity to dominate the phone room. So what I want to know is how you mentally prepare the night before knowing that the next day is a call day. Sure, absolutely. Um, number one, when I first got started, I needed to make it very crystal clear with anybody in my life that Mondays and Thursdays were going to be call days for me. And what that meant was that um, I needed to make sure that I was to bed by a decent time on a Sunday or on a Wednesday. Um, and I needed to 
make sure that my leads were ready. Um, I know that, you know, I was listening to a Matt Smith call the other day and he said something about the difference between um, somebody who is a disciplined producer and someone who's not is, you know, are you making sure your leads are bought the night before? Or are you buying them the morning of? Are you the guy who wakes up at 730 and really quickly jumps in the shower and you get up to your computer at 805 and you start dialing at 835 because you're organizing your leads for the last 30 minutes? Or are you the guy who got prepared the night before and sat down in the morning, you got up early, you got your body moving, you got into the shower, you had a good breakfast. You know, I sit down with a protein shake every single morning. That's a dial day because I know that I'm not getting up from this seat until the noon call whether it's the manager's call or Grady's team call, I know that I'm literally sitting in this seat for the next four hours and I'm booking appointments and I'm not getting up and I'm not taking a break. Um, you know, we were just on a call with Zach Tardowski and he talked about the idea of some people to say, I'll dial from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock and then from 10 to 1230, I'll take a break and then I'll get back on it at one and I'll dial from one to four and then I'll be done. And it's like, that is more stressful to me than just getting it done right away. You know, the best feeling in the world is sitting down and just knocking out your dials and being super disciplined with it and having, you know, six, seven, eight appointments going into noon. You know, you hear these crazy stories of, you know, Easton Patton, you know, having 15 appointments booked before nine. I'm not there yet. I, I, I'm not there yet. But being able to walk into noon, knowing that I've booked more than half of my appointments, what happens is you get like this, this dial day swagger that happens where you start to book more appointments than you would normally book. Whereas if I am walking into 1.30, 2 o'clock, and I only have two appointments booked, I start to sound desperate on the phone, and now I'm not booking appointments that I should be booking. And that's something that's super important. When you start early and you get ahead, um, that, that happens. And you know, not to say that I don't still have bad days, not to say that some of my people don't hit me up talking about bad days, probably just a week ago, I walked into three o'clock with only two appointments, but I was dialing since 8am and I still only had two appointments. And of course that gets in your head, but also like, this is a, this is a game of runs. And it's like, you go on to streaks and it's like, come four o'clock, everybody was on the phone and in a good mood, but the rest of the day, no one wanted to answer the phone. It wasn't that I was getting told no on the phone, just literally I was hearing the dial tone for six hours and, you know, a couple people picked up and then come four o'clock, come six o'clock, come seven o'clock, everybody started answering the phone and boom, I'm at 12, 13, 14 appointments out of nowhere. So it's just that discipline of knowing that there's different rhythms throughout the day. Sometimes people pick up in the morning, sometimes they don't, sometimes they pick up in the evening. And it's just, it's completely unpredictable. But obviously if you get started early, you set yourself up to win, you set yourself up for success. So for me, um, it's really important that um, I have my script in front of me even though I'm somebody who I've, I think, you know, I have my script memorized at this point, I still have it in front of me because I think there's something powerful about reading it and saying it at the same time, reading it, saying it, hearing yourself say it, hearing other people say it while you're looking at it. It just builds these neural pathways in your brain and these neural pathways help it come back to mind much easier. So for me, um, I want, you know, sometimes I'll even, um, you know, buy a book and then I'll listen to the audiobook while I'm reading it. So I'm listening to somebody else read it to me. So same exact thing when I dial, even if I know my script, I still have it in front of me. That's just, it's super important to me. And then I also have my objections, you know, pinned to the wall in front of me. So, you know, God forbid they have an objection, which they will. Um, perfect. That's exactly why I'm calling. Um, I'm finding my objection and I have just enough time to be able to get back into it. So um, just setting yourself up to win by number one, having enough leads, number two, getting organized, number three, just being super, super disciplined and saying, I'm not going to get up from this seat until this is done. Um, I even play games with myself where um, I'll, you know, everybody has to pee, of course, but I'll be like, I'm not going to get up to pee until I set one more appointment. You know, I'm not going to have lunch until we're watching the call and the training. You know, I'm not going to do those things until this specific thing is done. So for me, um, I just take my dial day seriously. I don't, you know, half ass it, I full ass it. And I just want to make sure that um, I'm not stressed out at 4 p.m. because I wasn't disciplined at 8 a.m. So 
that's that's awesome and I, and and I know that takes a lot of mental toughness. I mean cuz the phone room is where people make money, everybody knows it, but the mental toughness, the calluses that you've built, you've got to get through that because now the next question is going to lead me to what the real deal is. So if you book and this is going to be rough estimates, but if you walk out of the phone room, Jamie, with 30 appointments on the books or let's just say 16, okay? 8 and 8 can you pretty much tell what you're going to come home with after you go pick up the checks? I mean, for the most part, um, average. See, yeah. On average. Yes. And I learned this from Michaela and Gage that sometimes you just have weeks where the field owes you oh, and, yeah. and it comes back around and it's like some weeks it's every single week, seven to 12 K. And then it's like, you just have this weird week where you write two or three K and the next week you write 15, 18. And it just, it, it comes back around. It's like every three weeks I have a bad week. I don't know what it is. It just happens to me. But I also learned that everybody has bad weeks that it just, it just happens, but it's impossible to have a bad month. If you stack the numbers in your favor, I've never had a bad month at family first life, but I've had countless bad weeks, at least one every single month that I've been here. Okay, so I'm just going to give us the two minute warning because we're on somebody's Zoom that has a limit. So what I want to do now is I, I want to give... pay the bill because Jordan, I just went in and it says Jordan's like passed you on his bill. So I'm like trying to go out and pay it so it no, doesn't. I got it. Um, All right, so worst case scenario, guys, if for whatever reason we get kicked off of here, everybody go back, on. click the link, hop right back on. Yeah. Not a big deal. Just yeah. like we, we minimize things with the clients, not a big deal. Just okay. get right back on. We'll be back uh, on. This is off. I just didn't want you to abruptly just crash. Yeah, that's exactly, it's going to happen. So just be yeah. ready for it. No, I know. Um, so, you know, talking about the appointments that you set, uh, now that you've got your schedule and you're going to go execute that next day, when you're in the houses, are you trying to get referrals? Because I, I feel like referrals I always, I told somebody today when they called, I said, your best phone setter is your client. If you take the beneficiary and you have the client call the beneficiary that you want to introduce yourself, business card, all that stuff, they're answering mom's call. They're answering dad's call and just tell them five o'clock and do, what do you do to try to use the clients as your phone setters? All right. This is, this is super embarrassing. Um, I, I've never gotten a referral in Family First Life, so I don't, I don't know how much how much value I can give on on that okay. subject. But I know, fair, I know fair that. enough. Hey, I, by I the way, I got it. We're good. We're good. We get to stay. That's good. So yeah, I've personally never gotten a referral in Family First Life. That's not to say that I'm not teachable enough to start getting referrals. That's something that I can implement into my system. And every single week, guys, you should be implementing new things. You know, I learned something new from Zach Tardowski today that I'm going to implement that one thing into my open and the setting of the table. And I learned something new last week that was in regards to, um, you know, the I am your life insurance policy that now goes into my client packets that I give everybody at the end. And the week before I learned something new. So now, you know, I've known that I've needed to get referrals for a long time, but that's something that, you know, now I can implement into my business. So every week try to do something else, you know, yes, you know, I've been able to become a top producer, but I still have a lot of holes in my business, a lot of holes in my game and holes in the bucket that need to be filled. So uh, don't put, you know, people like me or Michaela or Gage on a pedestal in any way, because even me, like I, I didn't have a brochure for my first six months of business and I've never asked for a referral. So not that special. No, I mean, I get it. Like that's one of the things that, you know, I love about FFL is I don't care who you are. You can always learn something. Sure. If you, if you pay attention, you're going to learn something. I mean, I'll uh, take I'll take a step back if anyone wants to give a referral training right now, and I'll, well, I'll take. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what I've done and had great success because I don't believe in trying to get ten referrals out of somebody. Sure. But what I do believe, if I sit down with you and and I set you up with your life insurance, I do believe that I should know who your beneficiary is. I should also know where they live and if they're in the area. I follow it up like this at the end, you know, I've already got, they like me obviously, cause they just bought from me. And I just say, so one of the things that I like to do, because in the insurance industry, one of the big issues is, you know, people pass and nobody knows what to do and where to go. And a lot of money goes on claims. So what I like to do as your insurance guy is I like to introduce myself to your daughter, who's the beneficiary. So can you do me a favor real quick before I hit the door? 
Will you give her a call and let her know that I'm going to come over, explain your policy, what to do, give her my business card and my point of contact, and then tell her I've got some time at five or seven tomorrow and let me know what she says. And then I make them call right there. Most of the time they will because they like you. And now I got a five o'clock referral appointment on my books tomorrow, just like that, done. And it's usually about 70% of the time, it's going to be a sale. That's so good, man. I love yeah, that. I love that. That's so good. So it's, it's, it's a very simple thing. And you remember, you just sold the, you know, you already know all the information. You're just, they answer mom's phone call a lot faster than they answer ours. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, if you can do that once a week, you get a pay raise. I promise. Wow. That's huge. So, all right. That's, I mean, that's all I got on that subject, but uh, you know, so you go into the phone room with the mental attitude, you go into the field. I'm assuming your field activity is the same way. Yep. So when you have a bad day in the field or a bad couple appointments, do you, do you shut down and go hide in a parking lot and play on Facebook? I mean, so, so I have before. Oh, I, I mean, I, I, I won't lie. I've had some tough days in the field. Don't, no, don't get me wrong. I've had some days where I called my wife being like, babe, this is hard. This is really hard. I literally set 11 appointments today and 10 of them no showed me or something crazy. It's like, I just broke a record for the most appointments I've ever set. And this is the worst week I've ever had in the field that for some reason that happens to me. And then I like have four appointments. And I have a great day, but don't the numbers work out. So it was the fact I got the, the 15 appointments, not that I had four on one day and 11 on the other day. So um, yes, that happens to me all the time, but it's so important just to fill your mind with the trainings, to fill your mind with the podcasts. I mean, every moment in between an appointment, I'm either talking to an agent, um, talking to somebody on the team and encouraging them getting feedback from somebody else who I consider like an elbow partner, someone at a similar level to me um, or just ahead of me or talking to Grady uh, or somebody else, or I'm listening to a podcast at pretty much all times, or I'm recruiting and I'm doing that. And I'm, you know, filling my mind um, with that positivity. And I'm also reminding myself that I just, you know, you guys have heard it before. It's a little cliche. You can't let the highs get too high. You can't let the lows get too low. Um, one of my good friends, he was a, a college quarterback and he had this coach that he had this concept called 68 and breezy. He's like, every day I'm 68 and breezy. I was like, what does that mean? He's like, you know, the thermostat, he's like the thermostat. If I set the thermostat to 68 and the house gets a little hot and it gets up to 72, what happens? The thermostat kicks on, the air conditioning comes on and it brings me back to 68. What happens if it gets a little cold outside? The thermostat kicks on, it brings it back from, you know, 60 up to 68. And he's like, that's the mentality that you have to have. So even when I, I joke around, I ride around in my car at 68 degrees on the digital thermometer to remind myself to be 68 and breezy all the time. Even if I have a, um, a bad day and I always joke around saying, you know, my favorite day is 68 with a breeze. It's just, it's just a good day. Um, you know, wear a lo long sleeve and shorts or a short sleeve and pants. It's, it's just the best weather. So that's how I try to live my life and how uh, the mentality of being in the field when I just got told no six times, but I go to the seventh appointment and that last appointment magic kicks in and it's like, it makes up for everything that just happened. So it's just, you, you, you just can't dig too deep into it. And it's the people who dig into the ROI behind every individual action that get caught up and paralyzed in this business. It's the person who digs in and says, you know, that was a $20 lead I just wasted. Oh my goodness. You know, I just drove in the gas mileage. I just drove an hour and a half when that person told me no, you know, all, all of those things. It's, but it's, once again, it's the concept of I've had plenty of bad weeks, but I've never had a bad month because you have to look at the overall big picture of everything where, you know, I remember when I first, you know, I think I had my first 90 days here. I just wanted to look back and see um, the overall numbers. And I think in those first 90 days, I probably had like four or five really bad weeks. But then I went back and I did the numbers and I don't have the exact numbers here in front of me, but I broke it down to total issue paid. And I've got my dial trackers. I keep every single dial tracker. I'm just really data driven. And I looked back to how many appointments did I set? How many did I sell? And I broke it down to every single time that I set an appointment. It didn't matter if the person told me no. It didn't matter if the person told me yes. It didn't matter if I got there and the person wasn't home. It didn't matter if I got there and they porched me. 
all that matters is I set an appointment. I put an X on my dial tracker. Every single time that I did that, I made $35 in my first 90 days. I, 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 why, why wouldn't you just continue to do that? I, you know, $35 every single time that I set an appointment. I don't have to sell them. I think it was actually more than $35. I might be doing my math wrong. Maybe I'm missing a zero, but well, whatever it is. Every time I set an appointment, there was a dollar amount that I made every single time that I set an appointment looking back. So you have to just look at the big picture of everything and you can't get stuck in, you know, I had a bad day. Everybody has a bad day. Grady had bad days. Paul and Andrew had bad days, but the activity was king. That's the most important thing. They said, well, I'm going to dial in the car in between appointments to make up for it. Okay. Well, you know, I had this bad day on Tuesday um, or a bad morning on Tuesday. And it looks like I have a two hour gap here because somebody no showed me. Now, am I the person who goes and gets food and chills and scrolls on Facebook? Or am I the person who whips out my laptop, turns on my hotspot and pulls up phone burner and dials 30 instant internet leads that I just bought right there in the CRM right now and set three more appointments for tomorrow? Which type of person are you going to be? And that's not easy to do. It really isn't. Um, you know, to dial in the car, you know, with your laptop, up on the steering wheel and your physical calendar book and your other hand and the phone right here and you're trying to do it all. It's not easy, but what are you willing to do to make sure that the activity is there so that the results can be there? Absolutely. So what I want to do now for like the, the, the last five minutes is I want to kind of open, like if somebody has a question for Jamie, type it in there or you can just unmute yourself and ask. I'd love to do questions, but one thing that I know you mentioned in the beginning of the call that was important, I just want to make sure we hit it, is phone script. So we didn't we yes. didn't dig into phone script at all, and I'd love to I'd love to dig into instant internet phone script. That I was kind of hoping that were the questions were going to come, but let's do the instant internet phone script, Jamie. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's do it. So let's just let's just go for it. All right. All right. So, ring, ring. All right. So, ring ring. I mean, I'm ringing hello? you, I'm ringing you oh, man. So no. All right. Hello, Billy. Yeah. Who's this? Hey, Billy, this is Jamie Cheerio giving you a call uh, in regards to the inquiry that you sent into my office uh, in regards to the life insurance program for Marion County. I'm just the medical underwriter who's been assigned to get this informational packet out to you. I just need to go ahead and confirm the address. I've got it here as the one, two, three main street here in Salem. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Who are you again? Yeah. Like I said, my name is Jamie. I'm giving you a call in regards to the life insurance inquiry you sent into my office for Marion County. I'm just the medical underwriter who's been assigned to get this informational packet out to you. Now that address, that one, two, three main street, that's the right address, right? That's correct. Okay, perfect. And uh, I've got your birthday here as 113, 1983. Is that correct? Uh, yep. Perfect. All right. So Billy, just to kind of remind you, most people, they fill these things out because they want to make sure that God forbid something happens to them. There's no burdens left behind like burial or cremation, or maybe they just want to go ahead and leave some money behind for the family. Is that what you're looking for or something different? No, I just needed a couple quotes. Perfect. My wife told me to do that. Perfect. That's exactly why I'm calling is to go ahead and get you the quotes. But what I need to do first is I need to go ahead and get you the packet with the underwriting that will figure out what you're qualified for. So my job is just to get that packet out to you, but I need to figure out what you qualify for. Now, are you a smoker or a non-smoker? I'm a non-smoker. Perfect. And are you single, married, widowed, or divorced? Oh, I'm definitely divorced. Divorced? Okay, got it. And are you currently working, retired, or disabled? Uh, retired. Retired. Got it. And do you have any adult children? Uh, I do. Perfect. Okay. So based on that, it looks like, Billy, there's about a dozen options that you can qualify for. And they're all non-medical, meaning that there's no blood, no urine, no needles, no doctor's appointments. All that they do is they just make me, the medical underwriter, get out there for about five or 10 minutes just to verify that you are who you say you are, that nobody's trying to get this in your name, make sure there's no insurance fraud being committed, and just make sure you're not hospitalized, bedridden, hooked up to an oxygen tank or 600 pounds. That's not you, is it? Mm, I mean, sometimes my girlfriend calls me fat, but not 600 pounds fat. Perfect, perfect. So I'm actually a manager here. 
we've been super far behind. So they've got me helping out. They've got me delivering like 12 or 15 of these packets a day right now. It looks like they're going to have me dispatched out there on Friday and Saturday, seeing a bunch of families. I don't have a lot of time, only about 10 or 15 minute time slots for you. Um, now you mentioned you're retired. I'll be out there on Friday. You more of an early riser. You like to sleep in. Uh, I'm an early riser. You're early riser. Any doctor's appointments on Friday? Uh, nope. Perfect. Okay. So here looking at my schedule, um, I'll be getting out there and seeing a handful of families in Salem on Friday morning. It looks like I've got some availability right now at 815 or 845. Which one would you want? Uh, I'll take the 815. Can you come a little bit earlier, like 745 though? Because Let me see here, man. Um, I can't get out to you at 745, but what I can do is I can get out to you at 730. Does that sound fair? Perfect. Okay, perfect, man. So uh, I got you down here for 730. Now the address that I have here, the 123 Main Street, is that pretty easy to find if I have a GPS? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's right on the mailbox. You'll see the number on the mailbox. Okay, gotcha. It's right on the mailbox. Perfect. And just in case I'm having any trouble finding the home, what color is the house? It's red brick. Oh, it's red brick. Okay, perfect. Um, and any big dogs or gates I got to jump over to get to the front door? Uh, no, you don't have to worry about any dogs, no gates. Uh, you'll see the no trespassing signs, but as long as I know you're coming, we're okay. Perfect, man. I got one of those booby trap signs on my farm too. Got it. So they're going to have me out there, like I said, at about 730. Could you just do me a favor? Could you grab a pen and a paper? I just need to give you my state license number so you can verify that I am who I say I am. Can, can you text it to me? I don't have a pen. Uh, you don't have a pen? Okay, no pen anywhere? Nah, I mean, uh, I'm in the backyard. Perfect, no problem. All right, so this phone can receive a text message, right? Yes. Perfect, all right, so here's what we're gonna do, man. I'm gonna send you a text message with my first and last name, our appointment time, and my state license number. And what I need you to do is I need you to send me back a text letting me know you've received it and added it to your calendar. Does that sound fair? Absolutely, I got you. All right, Billy. Perfect. I got you down here for 730. I'm going to send you that text message with my state license number. Um, now I'm going to be driving a silver car and I've got brown hair and I'll be wearing a polo shirt with a name tag. And on that name tag will be my state license number. So if you see a guy walking up to the door with a name tag, you'll know it's me. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Billy. I look forward to meeting you and helping you. I'll see you early tomorrow. You as well. All right. Bye now. So cool, calm and collected, man. That's like uh like just effortlessly I and mean, that's from practice i mean you don't get that good and that smooth not rattled nothing from doing it three times and you got you just got to minimize anything like people say stupid things on the phone and just just, yep. just minimize it i got in the comments no shotgun um yeah i do i do say the shotgun comment pretty much every time um so I, I said that I either say the 600 pound comment or the shotgun comment. So I kind of pick one or the other. So you guys can choose what you want to do. Um, I, I personally take the mentality of low and slow and controlled. Um, I, there's some people who just say, I'm just going to dial with my own personality. And, you know, if you hear me right now, how I'm speaking, it is not how I was just speaking. Okay. So I have to turn on a different personality. And I kind of imagine myself, I visualize that I work for the IRS and I'm annoyed and pissed off. And I just need to get you this freaking packet, man. Literally they're, they're breathing down my back and they need me to get you this packet or I'm fired. And that's just the mentality that I tell myself that I need to do. Um, or I'm a DMV clerk, like they just said, and it's, I don't want to be here. Okay. Love it. I just need to get you this packet. I, you don't want me to bring it out. I don't even want to bring it out, but they need me to. So it's like one of the major keys that y'all need to learn how to highlight is the word they, okay? So I did send my script in the comments. You need to learn how to highlight the word they. I literally, every time the word they appears in my script, it's in capital letters because I need to enunciate that with my voice. It's like, listen, man, I'm just the medical underwriter and they just need me to come out there for five or 10 minutes. Everybody has a they, everybody has a boss. And it's like, hey, they have me out there at 7.30. They have me out there seeing about 15 families on Friday. They have me out there completely slammed on Friday morning. I'm like, damn, poor guy. Like this poor guy is working so hard. Yeah, I, I got to give him this 10 to 15 minute time slot. He's, he's running all over the place. And it's true. I do like 300 miles on an average field day because my appointments are far away from each other. So um, 
yes, I am running around. So they got to, they better give me the time. So, um, do you do the refusal of coverage form? I started to do it. I hadn't done it previously. Um, I, I will do that to come and set the appointment. And um, it's like, hey, you just need to sign right here to, uh, and once I actually get there, you just need to sign right here to say that you um, refuse this coverage and um, they have to go through it. And I read it to them about how they're basically X, Y, Z refusing to even hear about it. And it's like, all right, this only takes about five minutes before you actually sign this and refuse it. Let's just go ahead and get this taken care of. It'll take about five minutes. Has it worked for you yet? I've gotten my foot in the door a couple of times. Um, I, for me, I also like to go to solid appointments, you know? So it's like, I'll oh, book, that's what I was wondering. you know, it's like, it's like, I'll book that appointment, but also like at the end of the day, there's many, many times where I've had a more solid appointment and I just haven't even gone to that one. So right. I, double, I double booked the 3 PM slot. One was a refusal of coverage and one was a solid appointment. The refusal of coverage person, I probably will never call again. Just yes. to be honest. No, I, I mean, I get it. And that's what I kind of figured. Um, because at that point, you're kind of, you know, always try to double book over something like that. It's I pretty like, much will like go until the person hangs up on me. Like right. if any of you guys ever join live dials, like I will just keep going and keep going and keep going. And it's like, no matter what they say to me, it's just keep going, overcome objection, ask a new question. And they get mad at me and they, they hang up the phone sometimes. I mean, earlier today, um, we booked an appointment with a guy who he filled out a mortgage protection lead, but he didn't actually uh, have a, a mortgage. He like somehow he had like a $3,000 loan with the bank and he's like, I don't need it. I didn't fill it out. I don't want it. And he's like getting mad at me. He's yelling at me because I called him three times. And then um, he's like, I don't need it. I was like, Okay, so I'm seeing here that you have the the three. Th this makes sense. This was this was a mistake that they sent you this card because you don't even have a mortgage. I'm like, but what about life insurance? You got life insurance? And he goes, No, I don't have life insurance. Perfect. So what they need me to do is instead of getting the mortgage protection packet out to you, they now want me to get the life insurance package out to you. It'll just take about five minutes. I got the 215 or the 245, and I swear with this dude, I literally said, uh, I overcame the objection and said I have a 215 or a 245 six times. It was like, but I don't want you to come over. Okay, I don't want to come over either. They just need me to. I got the 215 and the 245. Yeah, don't come over. Listen, man, I don't want to come over. They just need me to get this life insurance packet out to. I got the 215 and the 245. And I just kept on doing it over and over again. And then finally, he, I told him, the. I, he's like, why do I need life? He's like, you said I need life insurance. Why do I need life insurance? I go, well, when you die, money goes to your family. And he goes, oh, okay, I'll take the 215. And then at the end, he goes, sorry, I was being so mean to you. Thank you. Love it. And it's just, it. you just keep going. That's one uh, thing that I learned like with new agents on the Zoom dials is I hear a lot of them kind of just give up and they're like, all right, have a good day. But it's like, if they haven't hung up yet. You keep going <laughs> until they hang up. Exactly. And I didn't used to do that. Like, I, I promise you, I did not. This is like, I don't know if this is new confidence that's even just come in the last couple of weeks. Like a couple of weeks ago, I would have given up on that one so long ago. Like my mentality in the beginning was I have more leads to call. There's gold in this stack and I don't really care. Okay. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. And I just dial hard and fast, hard and fast. And I would give up. But lately I've just, I've, tr especially with live dials, it's like, I want to go for it to show people that you, you can go for it and you can book those. And even, even if, you know, I'll be on the phone with someone for five minutes and they won't book the appointment. And it's just, it's a good time because I'm, I'm proving to myself that I can keep them on the phone. It's like every single time they have an objection, you overcome the objection and you ask a question. And it's like every time that you ask a question and they answer, you're back in control. And then they try to take back control and then you take back control and you just do it over and over and over again. And there's probably some wasted time on the phones that I have, but like, I feel like my skill set has improved so much in the last couple of weeks dialing since I started going for booking some of these appointments that I previously it just builds your muscle and your comfortability of overcoming objections. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah, go ahead. What would you say to the, like, as far as practice, because, you know, I, I deal with new agents coming in and I don't like them to go buy all their brand new leads and, and start dialing. So I usually give them old leads and tell them to dial those, blow them and tell them they're going to be built up. Or the other thing that I'll do is I'll say, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to set me and I'll have you call me 
you know, five, 10 times and go through, I'm going to give you different objections. Cause I feel like if I beat you up, like I just beat you up on the phone and you handled it like a champ. But if I beat you up on the phone, when they get on the phone, they're not going to get beat up as bad as I beat them up. So it's not going to startle them. Cause I feel like part of the phone momentum is when you get startled, that's when the doubt sets in. And then it's like, Oh, I can't do this. I, you know, I've seen it too many times. So tell me, you know, because I know you've got a big agency growing and I know you've got the same challenges with your new people. What are some of the things that you do for your new people that maybe we could do for our new people that would improve the phone sessions besides? And I know you make your people probably get in the dial all yeah, the time. I mean, the Man, biggest thing is dial team. I mean, it, that, that's the number one thing. But I, I mean, I do. Um, I mean, Mike Curry's on here. He's a good example. When he first started, he practiced his script a bunch of times with his wife. Um, but then we got on and we, I said, okay, we're going to do one straight through and I'm going to be a real, I'm going to be real easy. And then it's going to get progressively harder. And I'm going to start throwing different objections at you as you go. And, you know, the first time that you do that, you know, it's, it's tough, you know, it's almost harder sometimes to do that training call with your, with your coach than it is to even do the real call. But it was like, it, it's been powerful for him. And, you know, the first time that I said, Mike, Hey, we're, we're a little bit short staffed on live dial team. Can you just jump on here and unmute? And he, same thing as what happened to me. He's like, dude, I don't know. And I was like, bro, trust me, just unmute. Even if you get your butt kicked in front of everybody, you're gonna get better. And now, you know, he crushes it on the phones. So live dials and just, I think, for me, getting people out of their comfort zone, dialing live, even if they're brand new. Um, number one, live feedback, I think is better than fake, they're not fake feedback, but theoretical feedback. It's like, um, I, I always use this, this concept, it's called a frame of reference. And it's like, when you're getting started, uh, you, you don't have a frame of reference. You've never dialed the phone, you've never sat in a home. So everything's a theory. It's this thing that you're just like projecting out and you're like, now I need to get coached on what I'm going to do. I would much rather you just start, get your butt kicked. Let me watch and hear and give feedback. And then when they get their butt kicked, you know, Mike went into his first appointment, you know, probably not as prepared as he could have been. And he calls me after and he goes, all right, dude, you know, they just, they told me they had to think about it and this and that. And I, and you know, we go through it and he goes, and I go, so did you find out their budget? And he was like, no, I didn't even ask him what their budget was. And I was like, Okay, well, there we go. And it was like, but after he had his first appointment, it was like, listen, dude, I couldn't even, I couldn't pre-coach you on how to step, on what to do. Now we can actually look back at your first 10 appointments and you have a frame of reference in which we can coach upon. You know, it's like, I would rather you go just get your butt kicked a couple of times to get the dust off. And now it's like, okay, I've sat in a couple of appointments. I've stumbled my way through the financial inventory. I've stumbled my way through setting the table, you know, pulling up the quote tools, you know, doing all that stuff, even though maybe I did, or didn't get the sale, but now we can look back and we can game film on your first dial day. We can look back and we can game film on your first couple of appointments because now I actually have something to coach you on, something that you've actually experienced. And now the next time that you go and you do an appointment, you can apply that coaching. Whereas like you're sitting in boot camp watching these in-home videos and watching these dial videos and you've never sat in a home and you've never dialed the phone. You know, it's, it's all theoretical until you actually go do it. So it's like, I think it's almost even more valuable that you have your first dial day and then you go back through boot camp and re-listen to all the dial sessions. You go back after you have your first cup, five, 10 appointments and you rewatch all of boot camp for in-home because your brain was so full, your sponge was so full because you're brand new and you're trying to figure it out and you didn't have a frame of reference. So now you never go back and you watch those videos and you just go try to figure it out. Whereas you go rewatch those videos, it's a brand new video. It's like you never watched it before. And you're like, I'm pulling all this information out of it that I didn't gather the first time and things are hitting that didn't hit the first time. So for me, um, I practice a little bit with people, but I kind of just push them out the nest. And I'm just like, join, join, join live dials while you're going through boot camp. And the first day that you dial, do it live and we'll give you live feedback and, you know, go into your first home and all, all I need you to do is memorize this open. And if you can memorize the open and call me, I'll tell you what to do. And it's like, there's a lot of faith involved in that. Like Grady told me that. And when, when I called, he answered and he told me what to do. And he was the quarterback in my ear. And he said, all right, so you're going to write AIG you know, what, what that means to guaranteed issue whole life product. So that means that blah, 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 110%. He gave, he's like, you're going to say these three bullet points. Okay. Does she want burial or cremation? Cremation. Okay. Perfect. Write down these three 
prices, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. She's going to pick the middle option. He goes for 5,000, it's going to cover basic cremation for 10,000. It's going to leave a little bit of money behind for her daughter. And for 15,000, it's going to leave a lot behind for her daughter. Say it just like that. And she's going to pick the middle one. So I wrote down the three prices and I said that, and I said, all right, we got these three options. Which one makes the most sense for you? Or how can I adjust? And she said, the middle one. And I was just like, light bulb went off. I was like, oh my gosh, like that actually worked. And it's just, you just got to trust in the system, trust in the people who are pushing you out of the nest. Um, they're not going to put you in harm's way. Um, you know, Dave Wichard always talks about if Sean told him to jump off a bridge, he'd jump off a bridge, but Sean's never going to actually tell him to jump off a bridge. So it's like your mentor, your coach is not going to tell you to do something that is going to put you in harm's way. It might make you a little bit uncomfortable, but you just kind of got to get over it. And it's like, once you get through that first dial day, second dial day, first 10 appointments, it's like, now we've got real stuff that we can coach upon. I'd rather somebody just get out of their comfort zone and get their first dials and their first appointment out of the way, even if they get told no, even if they waste a stack of leads. I'd rather them get that out of the way so that now I can coach them on what to do next time. Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. It, you can't escape the newness. Uh, but so I just want to thank you for coming on the call. Uh, sure. We appreciate you pouring into us. And then, uh, you know, before we wrap up, if you have anything that you want to say, uh, but like I said, you know, I'm, we appreciate you. And I know from the day I started watching the dial i've seen you and i was like dude that guy's smooth so i mean i i've seen it i've seen what you do in there and i know that anybody that watches you is only going to get better T time and repetition and activity that that's it it's just the only difference between me and any of you is i started six months ago that's the only difference and i did reps over and over and over and over again consistency. The one who does the right thing long enough consistently wins. What are the right things? The right things are dialing the phone, disciplining yourself to stay in that seat until it gets done, actually going and sitting with the clients and, you know, following the system. You do the right things long enough consistently. That's it. You do it long enough, you'll get better at it. You do it consistently, you'll become an expert, and then you'll start to teach other people how to do this. This business was completely foreign to me. I had zero experience in this business. No one ever taught me these scripts in the beginning. You know, no one ever taught me this stuff. You know, I just came in and I watched the videos and then I dialed the phone and I didn't get up until the appointments were set. And I daily went to battle with myself saying, you can do this. Like you can do this. Reminding yourself, little affirmations, like dial hard, dial fast. Like, don't look up, like just keep going. And it's like, I know, I know that you just got a notification on your phone. You got a notification on Facebook, but like just dial hard, dial fast, dial hard, dial fast. I literally, before phone burner, I had to keep saying that because like there's a pause when I have to grab the next lead and I look at the next lead and prejudge it. You know, should I, you know, should I dial this one? That one's kind of far away. Phone burner, it's like, I don't even have time to think, but it's just, I kept reminding myself, dial hard, dial fast, dial hard, dial fast. And just, you do that enough times. And then it just, it becomes harder to not do than it does to do. All right. Thank, thank you very much, Jamie. And you guys, everybody have a great night. Be safe and uh, enjoy.